Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Chole. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing y'all how to make my delicious red velvet cream cheese marble cake from scratch. Now, basically, what this is, is a red velvet cake and a cream cheese cake, and we swirl the cream cheese cake batter into the red velvet cake batter and bake it. Once the cake is baked and cooled, we uh, top it with a delicious cream cheese frosting. This recipe calls for about 15 or more servings, depending on how you slice it. It's perfect for just about any occasion. Absolutely delicious. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, here's all that you'll need to make your red velvet cream cheese marble cake. Let's get started with our ingredients. You'll need some all-purpose flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, salt, unsweetened cocoa powder, unsalted butter at room temperature. 8 ounces of cream cheese, 4 ounces will have to be at room temperature for the cake and the other 4 ounces will have to be cold for defrosting. You will also need some buttermilk at room temperature, vinegar, large eggs at room temperature, canola oil, vanilla extract, butter extract, confectioner sugar, red gel paste or liquid food coloring, and to bake your cake you will need some Baker's Joy nonstick baking spray and a fat daddy o two pan now this is a 15 cup in capacity two pan and there we have it all righty let's get straight to it so in this medium sized bowl with a mesh strainer i'm going to add two and two third cups of all-purpose flour one teaspoon of baking powder and one fourth teaspoon of salt now i'm going to sift all the ingredients into this medium sized bowl all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick stir. All right, now for our wet ingredients, in a separate medium-sized bowl, I'm gonna add one cup of buttermilk at room temperature, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and one teaspoon of butter extract. Now I'm gonna take my whisk and just give this a quick stir. All right, now let's get started with the preparation of our cake batter. So in our stand mixer bowl, fit it with the paddle attachment. I'm gonna add one and one half sticks of unsalted butter, soften and at room temperature. Three tablespoons of vegetable or canola oil. And two and one fourth cups of sugar. Now I'm gonna start my mixer on a medium low speed just to get that butter, canola oil and sugar incorporated. Then I'm going to turn my mixer up to the highest setting and I'm going to mix this on high speed for six minutes. Now at some point during those six minutes, you're going to go ahead and stop your mixer and you're going to scrape down the sides of your bowl. Continue mixing that in. All right, scrape down the sides of your bowl. Now I'm gonna start my mixer on a medium speed and I'm gonna add three large eggs in at room temperature, one at a time. All right, scrape down the sides of your bowl. Now I'm gonna alternate the all-purpose flour and the buttermilk mixture into the batter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the all-purpose flour mixture and the buttermilk mixture. There is no measurements at this point. You're just adding it in there three separate times and that's it. Now you're gonna mix this on a medium low speed for about 15 seconds or until combined. All right, straight down the sides of your bowl. Now I'm gonna add the second amount of the all-purpose flour mixture and the second amount of the buttermilk mixture. And again, I'm gonna mix this on a medium low speed for about 15 to 20 seconds or until combined. All right, scrape down the sides of your bowl. Now you're gonna add the third and final amount of the all-purpose flour mixture and the third and final amount of the buttermilk mixture. Make sure you get a spatula to get that all in there. And again, I'm gonna mix this on a medium low speed for about 15 to 20 seconds or until combined. All right, scrape down the sides of your bowl. And the batter is now ready. Well, not technically, we have a 
couple of more steps to go. So now these are, these next few steps are going to be the most important steps for this recipe. So pay very close attention. All right. All right. So I separated the batter into two separate bowls. This is going to be bowl one. This is going to be bowl two. Bowl one is going to be for the red velvet cake and bowl two is going to be for the cream cheese cake. All right. So bowl one, the batter weighs two pounds in weight. All right. Bowl two, the cream cheese cake batter weighs one pound. So that's about two cups. All right. Now let's get started with bowl one. Add one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder and two to three teaspoons of the red gel paste or liquid food coloring. I'm going to just take my spatula and just stir all these ingredients together. And there we go. Now that that's nice and mixed in, let's go ahead and bring in our second bowl, bowl number two. All right, in bowl number two, you're going to add four ounces of cream cheese, softened and at room temperature. I'm going to just take my spatula and just stir that in. Make sure you stir it real good. Cream cheese should be soft enough to where when you stir it into the batter, it should automatically dissolve in there. It shouldn't have no lumps or anything like that. And there we go. Creamy and smooth with no visible lumps. All right, now for the secret step, you got to be really quick with this. All right. So over here for our red velvet cake, we have a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of vinegar. And on the other side, for our cream cheese um, batter, bowl two, I have one fourth teaspoon of baking soda and one fourth teaspoon of vinegar. Now I'm going to just add the vinegar into both bowls. This is one fourth teaspoon. And this is a half a teaspoon. I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick stir. And from there, you're going to quickly add it into both cake batters. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick stir. Make sure you stir it really good. I'm go ahead and mix the other bowl. It's the bowl number two. And both batters are ready. Now you're going to go ahead and spray your two pan with the Baker's Joy nonstick baking spray. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 325 degrees. All right, now I'm going to add my prepared red velvet cake into the two pan. This is bowl one. We're adding the first half of the batter in there. Do this as evenly as possible, okay? Now I'm going to just give this a quick shake to make the batter more even. Now I'm going to add the second half. This is the cream cheese version right on top. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and shake the pan to make the batter more even. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take a spoon and I'm just going to swirl the batter. Now I'm going to shake the pan one last time to make the batter even. And just give it a tap at the bottom. Now it is ready to be baked. Now I'm going to go ahead and place this into a preheated 325 degree oven on the bottom rack. Let this bake for one hour. All right, it's been about one hour now for our cake. Now let's go ahead and remove this out of the oven. Toothpick inserted into the cake should come out clean. Now you're going to let this cool for about three to four hours before removing it out of the pan. All right, the cake is nice and cooled. I'm going to just flip it over onto the serving pan here. And there we go. All right, let's get started with the frosting. So in this medium sized bowl, I'm going to add one stick of unsalted butter softened and at room temperature. And to that, I'm going to add four ounces of cream cheese. Make sure your cream cheese is cold, OK? Because if it's too soft, it's just icing going to turn out too runny. So you want it to be a little cold. And to that, I'm going to add two cups of confectioner sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract and a half a teaspoon of butter extract. Now I'm going to take my spatula and just stir this carefully just to combine that confectioner sugar with the butter and the cream cheese. Now I'm going to mix this on a medium speed for about one minute. Alright, scrape down the sides of your bowl. 
And I'm gonna mix it in for a little bit longer just to, to combine the rest of those ingredients. All right, scrape down the sides of your bowl and our cream cheese frosting is ready. All right, so I'm gonna start by spreading just a small amount of the cream cheese frosting on the top, in the middle, and onto the sides of the cake. This is called the crumb coat. It prevents the cake crumbs from appearing on the final layer of cake frosting. Place this into your refrigerator or freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, now I'm gonna take the rest of the cream cheese frosting and I'm just gonna spread it along the top. It doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just using my spatula to kind of help me out here. I don't want too much of a thick coating, I just want a thin coating. I'll just take some and put some in, in the middle. And onto the sides of the cake. You should have enough frosting as I want a light coating. I don't want too much of a big coating of icing on the cake. We could do any kind of decoration. I'm just doing it any kind of way. And after that, the cake is ready to be served. Ah, now it's time to go ahead and take a bite. Now I have two pieces of cake here. One for me and one for me. <laughs> here goes nothing. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh. It's soft, it's moist, it has a wonderful cream cheese flavor. Oh my goodness, this is one fantastic. Ooh. Well, I mean, looks like I'm gonna be eating both of these. Mm. I mean, this is absolutely delicious. It gets 10 table bangs for me, all in point. So, give the recipe a try. Hey y'all, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified of my videos. I have an official website for all of my recipes, including for this fabulous red velvet cream cheese mango cake recipe. You can go to www.charliecookandrews.com. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter under the name Charlie Cook Andrews. So, until next time, take care, and I hope y'all have a great day. Peace.